Let's start all over. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hey, Sophia. How are you? I love your hat. Thanks. I actually got it in Detroit uh, last week. I was on there, like, just like a day trip with my, well, like a weekend trip with my family. It's like two hours away from where I live. And it was this cute little chocolate shop. It's called Bon Bon. And uh, please sponsor us, Bon Bon, because their chocolates were amazing. And I saw this cute little hat. I'm like, I need this hat. So I love it. red. It is uh, apparently the first color in the universe that ever existed. So I'm kind of I'm aware of that. I, so cool. I know. I heard why, well, you know, I, I don't know if it's, I can attest to that. Same thing. I learned that the triangle also is the first geometrical form that ever existed so it was the first because of the trinity and so basically everything in the universe is a fractalized fractalization so um that's a whole different topic but i'm, I'm i don't know i feel like uh, this the more we're we're coming to the end of this year the the more stuff is uh being revealed that that is shocking but at the same time there's so much beautiful stuff that is coming out i agree yeah. I agree. It's like I feel we're, like we're all becoming like more enlightened, and there were so many solar flares the other day. I think it was like last weekend. It was insane. Really? Yeah, and I have the space weather app. I don't know if you have that on your phone, and you can you can track that. No, yeah, yeah, you should get that. It's completely free, and you can track you know what the um what the sun is doing and all of the geometric kind of weather that's going around. And it's not just like blizzard. It's about like coronal holes, solar flares, um, what else, um, earthquakes, all that kind of cool oh, stuff. And I'll just like, the, it will just update on your phone. You know, you'll just get the notification on your phone. So around oh, earthquakes. Time, yeah, earthquakes, yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 So like, it would, the Schumann resonance was like super high last week. So I think a lot of us are going through yet another awakening. It's like, how many more awakenings? How many I, more awakenings I remember back to 2019 and 2020 and I'm like, wow, this is getting wild, you know, little did we know. Yeah. But if you think about like what you believe back then, I'm sure that there's so many things that were revealed to be false or almost like, you know, propaganda programs to ca capture your attention, divert it into the wrong way. Like I was even thinking about this the other day when January 6th happened. Do you remember? Infamous yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. So I was really scared. I'm like, oh, great. You know, there's going to be some kind of takeover and coup and some, you know, wildness that's going to go on. So I went that night to the grocery store and I bought as many canned goods as possible. <laughs> oh. and, pouch food and pouch food, you know, like those, those pouches, like, you know, the, the Indian pouches, whatever they're called with like the beans, like the lentils and the rice and everything. So, you know, of course, like nothing of that sort happened. And that summer we went on a little camping trip. I'm like, all right, we can't go out to eat period, even in the car. Like we have to eat all the pouch food. <laughs> <laughs> pouch trip. <laughs> a pouch trip. I'm like, no. that's it. It's going to expire soon. But you know, like that was a total distraction. It was a distraction. It was trying to spin us off our path. So, you know, as we learn and grow, we can recognize what's propaganda, what's, what's from the dark, what's trying to throw us off our path. And we can also have empathy for people who still get trapped in, you know, lower vibrational stories because they might be at a different part of our, their journey than we are at this point. Absolutely. I'd love to start with you sharing who you are and what you do <laughs> before you get into your journey. Sure. Sure. So I'm Sarah Ashley, for those of you who don't know me. Um, and I am an astrologer. I'm also an Akashic Records reader and a tarot card reader. I started looking at astrology from a very young age. My mom gave me this book about my birthday. I'm a Capricorn. Capricorn season, woohoo, it's right here right now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm a Capricorn. That explains why I'm so responsible for my age and this and that. So it just kind of opened my eyes and I always felt a little different. I think a lot of us star seeds, you know, and light workers, we all feel like Mm, we just didn't completely fit in. I was never like a nerd or anything like that, but I always felt like I was 
sitting on the outside looking in at all times, even when people included me, I just never really felt like I belong. So astrology was an outlet to figure out why people are the way they are um, and why I was the way I was. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of bloomed from there. And um, after like a long time hiding my gifts, just because it wasn't socially acceptable, you know, growing up in the the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, it's like really not acceptable at that point. It wasn't very mainstream um, to be an astrologer. It was something that like some weird gypsy did, right? Like that's what people would say, like you're a weird gypsy or are you on drugs? Like that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not. You know, like it's, it's, it's not something, you know, anybody would be doing professionally as far as I knew. Like, you know, remember we saw like Ms. Cleo, 1-800 Psychic, like it was very taboo, you know, it was just taboo. So um, when the scam demic happened, I hope I can say that without getting your channel kicked off. Okay, good. You're like, say whatever you want. Okay. Worst things have been said. Okay, good. <laughs> You're good. When the scam demic happened, um, you know, I was a special education teacher for many, many years. And they said, okay, well, you guys are going to teach on Zoom now. Well, I don't know how that's going to work because I have all these kids with emotional disabilities, kids with learning deficits, kids that are, you know, they can't even figure out how to, you know, turn in something in Google Classroom because they're just not capable of doing that without assistance. Right. Kids don't have a parent at home. I just don't know how this is going to work. That's ridiculous. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I did the best I could given the situation, but it was a big wake up call with all the world events. And I was trying to like correlate, like, why is this happening? Like, you know, trying to find the spiritual meaning. And I looked in the Bible and there was some, you know, there was some stuff in there, but it was more astrological because that's more of what was going on at that time. So once I started turning back to astrology, I said, you know what, I think I should just do this for a living. Like, let me just see what happens, you know, let's try it out. So I started my Instagram page on the new moon in Capricorn two years ago. Now <laughs> it's almost it's off my two year anniversary and things just took off, you know, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And it just went in flow. And I am so grateful that I'm able to help people unlock their divine gifts through their birth chart, realize why they are the way they are, realize why they've never fit in with society or, you know, certain parts of them that do fit in and their talents and their challenges and all of it. It's just every day I go to work now, it's a complete pleasure. It I don't feel locked in at all. So what are like the things that people come to you the most with astrology? What is sure. your concerns? Sure. So, you know, people just really want to know why they are the way they are. They come to me for the birth chart, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Then after I help them unlock why they are the way they are and what their life's mission is, I've been getting a lot of that. Why am I here? What is my purpose? So we look at the North node in astrology to look at our life purpose. So that really does help people and it validates them a lot because a lot of people that are like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that um, because, you know, I'm going to be scrutinized. This is again, considered taboo, or I don't want to step out of, you know, um, societal paradigm or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So after they get the birth chart with me, they usually come back, they get like a solar return chart, which is, you know, a predictive astrology, what's going to happen the year of their birthday or right now I offer 2023 readings, which is like, what's going to happen in 2023. And of course, I can't see every single thing that's going to happen in 2023 based on astrology and my intuition, but I can see like, what are going to be the major challenges and what are going to be the really cool opportunities for success in 2023. Oh, that's amazing. And then you do, you said Akashic record readings. Yeah, I get Never. a lot of those too. Tell yeah. me something about it. That is something I'm not familiar with. I know about it, but I've never had anything. I've never come near it. So I'm, I am I know that that's a hugely um, potent area to look into because tell me. <laughs> so the Akashic Records is the library of all human consciousness that ever has been, ever will be, and, and is. 
Uh, so I tap into the Akashic Records with my guides, um, with the help of Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron, the good Archangel Metatron, of Ooh. course. I know there's like, you know, some dispute about that. There is a very, there is an Archangel Metatron and he is amazing. Um, he is the um, guardian of the Hall of Akashic Records. And Archangel Michael helps protect us from any kind of malefic entities or energies or people who try to come in and, you know, like try to throw off the reading because, you know, some people have stuff around them that might not be the best energy. So we work with taking that away too. And I tap into um, three of their lifetimes and sometimes they're human lifetimes, starsea lifetimes, lifetimes from ancient civilizations like Lumeria Egypt, Atlantis, and also sometimes we have like elemental lifetimes and animal lifetimes also come through. I've also pulled future lifetimes for some of my clients too. And it's really cool to see that. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I channel it and mm -hmm. I always make sure I, I ask the guys like, please help it resonate mm -hmm. with their current situation. Cause there's always some kind of lesson in those, those three lifetimes, like all three of them that they need to be reminded of because our souls keep on repeating the same patterns over and over again until we master that lesson. So how does, um, how does the Akashic records help in the here and now work? Yeah. So a lot of times I will reveal how somebody might've passed or some kind of tragedy that they endured in a past lifetime. And it will actually make that person recognize right now why they have that fear or why they keep on repeating a certain pattern in their current lifetime. So it helps them heal um, that a current pattern or fear because they come face to face with it. They recognize it. And sometimes we also um, meet people who are in their current life that they have a soul tie or soul contract with um, through many lifetimes. It could be a spouse, a sibling, a friend, uh, a parent who we meet again in the Akashic. And I, I have no, you know, I, I have no knowledge of this person until we go into the Akashic. I'm like, okay, I see this person. I'll describe them I'm like, oh, that's my husband. I'm like, while well, he was your father in this lifetime, it does happen because when we are in soul families, it's like we travel together in pods and there's a, an excellent book. And um, I'll send you the title later because I can't remember it. Oh, many souls, many lifetimes. I think that's what it's called. Many souls. Yeah, many we can lifetimes. add it in the description with all your links yeah. too for people. Who yeah. Are yeah. Okay. Okay. And that doctor, um, he was a psychiatrist, uh, Yale graduate psychi psychiatrist, and he actually helped people with past life regression. And he said that too, that there's soul pods. So like, for example, your sister could have been your mother in your past life. Right. And we just keep traveling together over and over again. So it's not like incestuous or anything because, you know, we weren't in the same bodies back then. Right. Yeah. That's crazy though, isn't it? It's like, oh, only if we're in the same body. Um, but right. I guess you know, there obviously there's a difference. Right. Just because yeah. just exactly like a lot of people, like, you know, they might've been a different gender in a past lifetime, even though, you know, like I'm female and I was male in other lifetimes doesn't mean I want to be a man again. Like definitely not in this lifetime. I'm very happy. I'm a woman. <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> being a man at all. I'm like, oh, gross. Um, no offense guys, but I'm very happy that I'm a woman. Can't imagine it any other way. <laughs> yeah, we should be happy like that to, to get to be there in a place where we're just content with, you know, our embodiment. That's awesome. Like, exactly. There's exactly. enough confused people. Yes. Yeah, so I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that could have to do with, you know, a past life too. Like they haven't healed that past life yet. So you, so it doesn't have to be, but it could be that somebody who is gender confused or disoriented or whatever you want to call it, or not, let's say not decided, mm -hmm. uh, could look into something like this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It could be that like they miss themselves when they're a man or a woman in the, uh, the past lifetime. Like they mm -hmm. could have been a person of great power, or maybe they just have not, you know, like there's a lot of people who have past lives that they really haven't um, completely shaken off yet. And there's so many YouTube videos about this. Um, there's so much literature about it as well. And that's why like going into the Akashic can be really healing for people. Well, that's fascinating. I was sorry. 
I was just thinking, so when we become, well, first step is of course, wanting to look into this, but when you've looked into this and you come like it comes up from the subconscious, it comes into the awareness, it doesn't become, it's not a pattern anymore. It's actually a decision. So if you keep go yeah. being, going down that path, you're doing it consciously. So it is a decision, right? So it can right. stop becoming a, like you're, you're not the victim of, of, a, of a, a subconscious pattern anymore. You become right. the, the, the constant creator of that situation. So it's really then at least you get the choice. Exactly. It's an opportunity for growth. Yeah. And yeah. even yeah. when I do someone's birth chart, I'm like, okay, here's your potentials. You have the potential to, you know, be a CEO. Okay. It's in your chart. You have the potential. Not everybody has the potential, believe it or not. Some people are better off working for an organization. Does that mean they're weak or they're stupid or anything like that? No, it's just that they're better off, you know, working for somebody else. They can do amazing things and they can have more success maybe in their family life or their hobbies or with their kids or whatever it is, but maybe they're not going to be like a business mogul. So if I tell someone, okay, like you should really open that business and they decide not to, then like, that's again, like the divine, once again, showing them here is the opportunity, here's your potential. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to do that, like, you know, that's a wasted opportunity that they're going to have to revisit again in their next incarnation. Right. Right. So at least it becomes a choice and you become aware, which is basically the right there, the your your development helper to help people understand how to activate their potential. And then it's up to them to say, I want to or not. And sometimes I've experienced people who've had a, a um, some kind of epiphany, awakening or or something, and they might have to go into their um kind of like a, a rest uh, position for maybe even three quarters of the year. And then they're like, okay, now, <laughs> now I'm going to yeah. go after this. You know, it's like, sometimes there's a lot of layers that have to be processed through probably with some, some people. And, and I, I've had my times where I've had to process or I put like personal development to the side. I'm like, I'm fed up. I've done this. Like I've, I've done this excessive and ex, um, excessive, excessive. Yes. <laughs> Looking for the right word. Um, and uh, you you might need a break where it was just a lot to take in, and then you have to decide. There's a there's no there's no one timing for everybody. It's just like everybody has the timing, and who are I mean, yes. look if you are able to look into the Akashic records, if you meet somebody um, as a, as a normal person who who doesn't know how to do that, and for you it's even a journey with somebody. But we are so quick to judge ourselves of course but others too we have no idea what they're going through or what they've gone through no 100%. idea 100 yeah. i love that you're saying that because there's such a push right now that i'm seeing in the spiritual community about you know why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that yet it's like okay well we all are on a different timeline right even though, you know, the earthly timeline is all the same, but we're all in a different timeline. It's definitely pushing us. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's colliding. It's like you know, a particle collider. I don't want to get into CERN, but it's almost like that, right? It's like this particle collider. That's kind of how it all is. But we're all on our own individual timeline, right? So when, for example, like you and I both, both are entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, we decide to start our own businesses. Um, I know, I don't know, I'm not aware of Sophia, of what you were doing before, but I'm going to assume that you weren't always an entrepreneur, right? So, you know, we might see some qualities in our friends and be like, Hey, why do you still work for them? Like you could do this. And, um, and we can, you know, kind of like, um, not, I wouldn't say persuade, but criticize, we can criticize some people for not doing what we're doing. But the thing is, they might not be ready for it, like you're saying, and they want to, but they're just, it's not time yet. They have to take care of some other emotional things or um, physical things like bank accounts or payments or whatever it is. So we have no right to judge where somebody else is in their journey uh, because sometimes we have to be in that surrender state, that flow state. Like, Right now, I can look back and be like, okay, the past two years has been amazing. Could I be doing more? Sure. But at this very moment in time, it's better that I'm just in flow and not pushing more and more stuff. Because if I push more and more stuff, I burn out. 
I'd burn out and nobody would ever see me again, you know, like hardly at all. So we all have to be in our own lanes. And that's, that's really the, the theme of 2023. Stay in your own lane. That's awesome. I was yeah. just thinking when, when you said uh, flow state is kind of the opposite of projection. So um, I think we're, we're all prone to project, which is very 3D, if I, if I might say so, because it's like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of hearing 3D, um, but it, 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 it's just part of where we're, we're coming out of that understanding that we're subject to reality. We're not the creators and coming out of that state of understanding, we're, we're not subject anymore. We are the creators. So we can also come out of the projection, the, 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 um, the way we project our inner world onto the outer world and then complain about it, not understanding, wait a minute, that's actually, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> exactly. Might be mine. Let me get, then we go check. Um, it's not all me always, you know, we don't have to always judge and, and, and question ourselves. Sometimes it really is something or somebody else and that's fine. And then we can leave it there. It's true. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's like, it's good to be self-reflective. Yeah. But to be like so harsh and so critical on yeah. yourself where it's like never anybody else's fault, like that's, that's an issue because like how you respond is part of your own programming, right? It sometimes that can't be helped, but you know, there's, we will get triggered. We will get triggered. And is that necessarily the other person's fault or I'll put it this way. Was it their intention to trigger us? I'm not sure. Right. We're not mm -hmm. sure. We are not sure of everybody's intention, but to figure out what someone else's intention was, um, you know, so we can help process whatever it was that happened, that's going to really assist in a lot of healing. Oh, I've had some really profound experiences um, in, uh, where, where I've had something, something happened and I thought it was just the worst experience ever like human interactive experience I'm like how could this have happened what where did I miss uh, when when like where did the trail uh, the, the train derail how did this happen until I looked into it and like thank you experience thank you person who yes. is, is so aggravating me <laughs> or is or is doing something that is getting to me and, and painful um, and I realized, oh my God, it was a development helper. I, yes. I attracted. I'm like, God, thank you. And, uh, and, and it just catapulted me to the next level, but I, you know, it didn't start off that way. It started off with, oh, how could it, how could this be happening until you, and it, you know, that's where you come in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, um, I mean, I wouldn't be here, um, in my life doing the things I'm doing the way I'm doing them without people that, that I met along the way who Same. help me understand and grow and reflect because we all have it in us, but we need that person with like the, the, the key, the key keeper, the person yeah. to help us unlock that door. We can't do it by ourselves sometimes. And we just see that person who is an expert at this. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I see what you do. You said, so you do, um, um, astrology, Akashic record reading, and then um, I find that so sure. fascinating. And then, so you can come with as a couple too. I mean, that must be pretty. You have a have to have a lot of. I've done it twice in my life. So you come like as a couple, and having a reading it was not a, an Akashic reading, um, but you have a reading in terms of what are I did a past life. Oh my god, that was the scariest thing ever. I think we fought, we fell out of love for two weeks. Basically, we were like complete foreigners oh after that experience. That was the scariest thing ever. I'm like, no, no feelings. Feelings both gone. I'm like, really? oh, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> what kind? Of, you said it was a past life reading based on astrology, or was it just like no, a no? It was actually an exercise with a healing, uh, healing with a healer um, from East Germany, and she made us. Uh, um, do this exercise where we kind of, we were standing and then we took one step and we were looking each other in the eyes and we were going through past lives together and she was reading it while we were doing it. And then she told us afterwards what, what, ha what happened. And that was not fun. I would not write like that. That was something I wouldn't recommend that, that either. No, <laughs> no. I, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And maybe she, yeah. she didn't either. And I believe that she has these amazing capabilities, but she, 
she's kind of like in um, in Germany, say an axe in the woods. So she, she kind of like bulldozes sometimes through these topics. And she did definitely did that in that relationship. It did, you know, that at one point that relationship ended. So I guess there was, it was karmic too, but still anyway, um, you have to have a lot of courage. And so I guess why I'm asking is, I would love to do something like that again, in terms of what is the potential of the relationship and how can we be better guided with each other um, to make this an even more beautiful relationship and more under, bring in more understanding and, and yeah. appreciation for the other's journey. And how can I support my partner? How can my support partner better understand my journey and support me? Is that yeah. a good is that yeah, a good yeah, I have that offering. I have a synastry reading. We call it synastry, which is relationship compatibility reading. That's on my website, sarahashleyastrology.com as well. And sometimes people come by themselves because, you know, they're like trying to investigate why things are going on and they don't bring their significant other. And then a lot of times people do bring their significant others with them. It was really cute. Like somebody got it for a wedding gift for the newlyweds mm-hmm. and they came in and it was kind of like, you know, like premarital counseling, even though they're already married. Oh, and I was wow. like, well, he kind of, sometimes he communicates like this and you communicate like that. Like I can see those kind of things, like through their Mercury signs, how they communicate their love language, their Venus, their fighting style through their Mars and their Pluto. So mm-hmm. a lot of times, because um, it's interesting, most couples who are married and come to me already already compatible because they're already interested in this together. So, you know, I don't have anything that's like detrimental to tell them. Um, but it is fun. It is fun for couples to come in and, and see all those things. And it's not going to be like your experience where it's going to be like this really difficult, uh, <laughs> Know, karmic journey through the past. I can see sometimes like past lives through it. Like I'll give them a like a mini glimpse. Um, if I see that there's like South Node connections, the South Node talks about like where we came from in our past. And if planets are conjunction, which means they're sitting on the South Node, then I can see the possible relationship between the two people. But once again, just because you had a past life together doesn't mean you should be together in this lifetime. It just depends on the two people. Yeah. Have you ever had people come for health readings? Health readings. I don't recommend people see me for those Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I'm not comfortable doing that just because some people have some really big issues that I don't feel qualified to diagnose. Um, But there are some fabulous medical astrologers out there. And I can't sometimes see like if someone's going to have like a health issue in their chart or like a health disruption. Um, but I, it's, it, that's not my, my area of expertise. But, but on the other hand, I do think that readings are part of health on some level and can bring you everything that brings you back into balance, could also cause for healing, right? For sure. For sure. I yeah. think, you know, I'm a holistic healthcare believer too. So mm-hmm. if you're emotionally stable, if you're living in your mm-hmm. gifts, you know, if you're taking care of yourself, self-care, um, all that kind of great stuff, then yes, you're probably going to be in better physical health. If your psychological, emotional, and spiritual health are, mm-hmm. are more in balance, if your chakras are aligned, yes. then most likely you'll, you'll be in better physical health. And then you do a, a tarot, you said, right? Yes, I do tarot reading. So I also offer like a package to where somebody can get like an astrology and tarot combination reading. And that's a lot of fun. Like because some people, they don't believe in tarot because they're like, it's just cards. They're just random. I'm like, no, 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 they're not random. They're Hmm. random. I'm working with spirit. I'm working with a higher spirit, which is my guides and my angels and God, God source creator. I call it God source creator universe. It's all the same, right? And um, I'm pulling from source. So, uh, you know, what is coming out is, is the cards don't lie. Like the cards are very biting sometimes. And sometimes there's people who are not open to hearing what they are saying to them because the cards are going to tell you like, hey, Sophia, you know, you know, you're not doing this right. They're going to tell you. And, um, you know, not everybody's open to that, but most people who come to me, I'd say 90% of people who come to me for a tarot reading. That's what they want to hear. They want that validation. Not that they're on the right track, but they, that, it, that 
these are the ways to get on the right track and they're on the wrong track right now. But a lot of people who come to me are also on the right track and they just want to like check like, hey, should I, uh, you know, move or interview for this job or date this person or what's going on with my sister and why is she angry at me? I don't want to call her up or I already called her up, like that kind of stuff. So um, the tarot is one of the best divination tools there is besides astrology for the current energies, current energies, not past life type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you use these instruments for your, or these tools for yourself? Like yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, it's the best way to learn. So, you know, uh, we have tarot classes on mysticarts.org and for people to learn how to use the tarot, I recommend that you do daily readings for yourself. Just only if it's, even if it's just one card. So my advice, just blanket advice to everybody, just get yourself a deck of tarot cards. I don't have to be fancy. They can be the Rider Waiter, the Tarot of the Spirit, the Tarot of the Spirit on um, Taylor's mom's deck and his grandma illustrate. That's on our website and you can go through, it's on Amazon, but it's on our, also on our website. Here's the Rider Weight deck. It's, you know, like the old fashioned, yeah. like $7 a pack or something like yeah. that. And you just shuffle and you'll know when to stop. And you can ask your, your spirit guides and God's source creator, what do I need to know about today? Just a very general question. What do I need to know about today? And it could be a card that's positive or a card that's negative, but either way, even that negative card is going to give you some kind of lesson there. Like, oh, here's the death card. Yeah. I need to let go of some stuff. I need to let go of that anger I've been holding on to for a long time. Oh yeah, I gotta quit that job before they fire me. That kind of thing, and it sharpens your intuition. Like it connects you stronger with your where you kind of like it makes you more aware, right? It does. It does definitely. It's like a muscle. Intuition's like a muscle, and if you don't use it, it's not going to be as strong. Just like what you're saying, Sophia. That's so cool. So I know you have a pretty cool team around you too. Yes, I do. I'm so blessed. So. Of course, we have Ishmael, who's an amazing galactic ambassador, right? A cosmic ambassador. And he does the star seed cosmology. And I know that he's working on a second book right now. And everyone's asking me, when is it coming out? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even think Ishmael knows when it's coming I out. Know. Wait a second. Wait a second. Look at this. I have uh, here. I actually, so this is not, this is, I, I got the, the, the book like right after I, I, I found him and I don't know if I found, I don't know who I found first. I think we definitely, we saw each other in California yeah. um, in Anna, where yeah. I'm like, I, I will never forget. Sorry, I'm interrupting, but I remember, I, I'll never forget. I was, it was a big room that we like, probably, I don't know, something plus minus 500 people there. And I didn't know you guys. I mean, I didn't know you yet. And I didn't know Ismail was coming. And I remember across the room, I saw you and your, the, what's his name? Your other partner, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, right. I saw you guys and I'm like, like I had like t visual, uh, tunnel vision over to you guys and I didn't know why. I'm like, why can I not stop staring at those two? Energy. And, I over and I realized you were connected to Ishmael. I'm like, that's incredible. It's almost like this spotlight came down on, on, on you. Uh, it, it, like you were the one that I was like most focused on and I don't know why it just, it just happened. And I'm like, I have to go over there and say hi. And, oh, Ishmael. Oh, <laughs> it was so funny. I, know. I remember noticing you too. Well, you're so beautiful. It's hard not to notice well, you. Well, same. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% same. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, it's really like blonde sisters. That's what it was. So, yeah, probably. I'm sorry. Yeah. I interrupted you though. You were like, you were talking about Ishmael. I didn't want to, I didn't want to. No, no worries. So yeah, I don't know when the second book is going to come out. Everybody will know at the same time. Everybody will know at the same time. Uh, also, of course, we have Taylor, and he is an expert tarot reader, is a generational reader. He also works with elemental magic. So some people, okay, see, so glad you asked because I was about to. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, pulling Rava out of a hat or black magic. You know, we all use magic. Even if we don't think we use it, we use it. So whether you call it prayer or spells, it's all the same. If you are thoughts, feelings, affirmations, yes. When you say something over and over again, notice how it becomes your reality. So, and also we teach you how to work with the elements, the elements, like, see how I wear crystal bracelets. Like I'm sure you wear them too, you know. I have some crystal. Yeah, what what crystal is that? It's a, um, now I forgot. <laughs> I can't really, is it yellow? It's yellow. 
yellow it's like a yellow quartz yeah i think it's citrine yes okay. yeah that's a really good one yeah it's good for abundance it's really really good for abundance and bringing in happy thoughts and all that anyways but we teach you how to work with crystals and certain herbs and the, there's believe it or not the days of the week the moon cycles astrology mm -hmm. all of that all that factors into creating your best life. And if anybody is like, oh, magic is evil. It's like, well, we're not doing anything that's harming anybody, right? That's black magic. That's what the um, the cabal, if you will, co-ops. And I've been trying to teach this to a lot of my students because they'll come into astrology class, psychic clairvoyance class, tarot class. And they're like, well, I've seen the cabal use these symbols. I'm like, of course the, they use these symbols. They co-opt them and they make them evil. They hijack like so many other things in our in our world. Exactly. And they and they hijack the really, really potent things. 100%. And then yeah. they get the best readers, you know, people could be bought off and they pay them top dollar to buy them, buy them off and to utilize this stuff. Um, and infuse satanic rituals into it. So we do not do satanic, not, no, 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 because that stuff, I will warn everyone right now, will boomerang on you like a ton of bricks. And it's not just in this lifetime, but for subsequent lifetimes. So be very, 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 very careful. So, you know, the divine wants you to live your best life, right? And everybody else around you to live your best life. So there's nothing wrong with using the elements, ancient esoteric wisdom to create magic in your life. So that's what um, Taylor's the expert of um, elemental magic and tarot. And then we have BA and BA is awesome. Um, and she is a master manifester. So we're actually going to, she's a psychic clairvoyant too. Oh. And she has, and I'll let her tell her own story sometime, but she came from, I'll just say, um, she had a glow up because she was in a relationship that was very abusive and she had to start from the ground up. And part of that was using her intuition, using astrology and using her psychic gifts and opening herself up to the spiritual world. So BA and I are going to teach um, a class called Love Magic. And that's not about creating a love potion to get your twin flame to love you. It's not like that at all. It's all about loving yourself, not about narcissism, but loving yourself, um, living in your divine gifts, speaking to yourself in a way that creates abundance, not just, you know, physical abundance, but in here, this kind of abundance, the love inside that glows out of you, right? So it attracts the right people into yes. your life, right? Yes. So we're going to have that class and it's also going to- Love that. When are you starting? That class is going to start on Sunday, January. Um, let me- Where's my calendar? Please share First. every link so I can add it below. I love this. Yes, I believe it's on um, the first Sunday of January. And we're going to add that to the website on Tuesday. So right now it's not added, um, but I'm going to add it on there on Tuesday. So it's going to be available for sign up. That's three Sundays in a row at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. This way people can go because I know a lot yeah. of people work during the right. week and whatnot. So that's going to be a great class. I'm really looking forward to teaching that with BA because we're all about empowering people, giving people the tools to open their minds, right? To um, living their best life because the mass media and this um, matrix, if you will, has really pushed people down in such a low vibration where they don't even know who they are. It's very difficult for them to remember who they are and acknowledge it. It's so true. I love the 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 love um, magic thing that you're doing because I mean, what what that's the best possible place to be in is when I'm in tune, in flow. I'm in love with life. I'm in love with. I can only be in love with everything around me if I am in love. I am. I'm like actually, you know, love is in me. If yes. I have it, would it then then I connect because like a magnet. If I don't have it activated, I can't. There's nothing outside that I will be able to resonate with in in with that frequency, that love frequency. Exactly. And so it's like it's 
I, I love that state when I feel like I'm just blissful, like I'm just in desire and passion, excited, tuned in, turned on, tapped on. And I'm like, oh, I just want to hug everything. And you attract, you go outside. It doesn't matter if you have makeup on or if you feel pretty or not. If you're in that state, you go into whatever grocery store, bakery store, and everything is just like, it just, people feel it. And they'll just yeah. say nice things. And it's the most amazing state to be. It's like flow state. Right. Exactly. And it, like you were saying, it, it makes other people feel good too. Yeah. So you're feeling good and it's contagious. And even mm-hmm. animals will like want to be near you too. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what was going on. I have like my, my, no, he was scared. My cat bit and uh, scratched me and I'm like, oh. I have to go. I was out, I fell out of my flow state. My, my cat just, uh, my cat immediately showed me. Oh, like, no. <laughs> oh. I might need your course. Um, I'm joking. Um, but I would, I actually really, really would like to. And we definitely, these times, like this is, this is these times are calling us out where we're not in our flow state. It's we're I'm all of the stuff that we're seeing outside that we don't like, that is crumbling, the things that, everything that is not sustainable anymore. We can stare at it all all we want and complain. It's not going to make our life better. What is going to make our life better is when we start to look at what is, what is inside of us that needs balance, that needs nurturing, that needs more love. Where do we need more love? It's an inside job process right now. It's not enough. Like 3D was an outside, it was a, almost all, all of it was an outside job because we, we were coming out of times where we have been directed, we've been controlled, we've been manipulated and it's yeah. enough. Yeah, it was a complete man- manipulation because what it was is they taught everybody to hate themselves, right? Oh, yeah. And then only they had the answer, this, you know, like the the school systems, the you know, commercialization, the, the churches, and I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about like Catholic church, all that stuff. And I'm not trying to offend people. I'm just, this is, this is definitely documented. You know, only we have the answers for you. You feel guilty and we're going to create, you know, a, a life for you where you just listen to us and check these boxes. And then you're worth, your life is worth living. Otherwise, why even live? Like, and that was the message that was sent to people for so, so long, it's still being sent to people. It's, I mean, people are, if you look at like kids, you know, um, depression is higher than ever and young people higher than ever. Why is that? Because these messages are being sent. You are worthless unless you do it our way. And that's a horrible, horrible, horrible message. And we're trying to reprogram people Yes, and and, and not give them our programming. (laughs) But say here, here's a way to rewire your brain and program yourself with divine programming, rewiring. What I find so fascinating, Sarah, is like, you're basically, you're just, you're, you're a teacher again. You're still a teacher. Yes, you never stop being a teacher. No. You just no. shifted how and what you're teaching. Exactly. You aligned it with your, with your, with your, your it's totally aligned with you now. But you're still a teacher. Isn't that remarkable? It is. It is remarkable. I'm so grateful because for so long, you know, I was trapped in like, here's the curriculum. Did I hate it? No. I loved a lot of the kids. I love teaching English language arts. You know, it's my thing. But like to do that over and over again and not have the freedom. And now I have the freedom to teach people how to expand themselves not to say, okay, you don't understand Beowulf from, you know, 1227 then <laughs> and you can't pass my class, you know, like, you know, and I have to teach it even though I don't want to, you know, it's, I, I am very blessed and I'm blessed that other people are, um, are being helped. And that's the big blessing right there. It's not just that I'm enjoying it, it's that other people are enjoying it and it's opening their minds and their hearts and improving their daily lives. So what else could I want? Well, thank you for doing all of that for everybody. You're welcome. From my heart. I mean, I really like, I, I'm here to support and to, to, to give room, like to give space, a whole space for people like you. That's just my, my calling as far as I know. Um, who knows what, will, what, what else will show up. 
Um, so your tarot card class, um, is that, is there an age restriction on that or can any, put even kids do it? I would say like, I want to have like 12 year olds do it, but, um, I would say like, if someone's like, if someone's like a incredibly mature 12 year old, then yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say like teenagers and up teenagers okay. and up, you know, probably like 15 and up. That's okay. what I would recommend. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had enough interest yet. Um, it from like children, you know, anybody asking about that. And the other thing I think with Tarot is such like esoteric concepts that, you know, I remember pulling out a deck in middle school and I was like, I, I just couldn't get it yet. Um, so I think it would take a really special kid and there's a few of them I'm, I'm sure to, uh, join, but I'd say, you know, like high school and up. I, I actually have two and one, one 12 year old and one, I think she's 15 or 16, 15, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So is it, is it like a live or is it recorded? How is like, how are the, how is oh, the course set up? Yeah. All of our classes at the Mystic Arts right now are live. And the reason why we do them live is so that we can answer students' questions and they can have the experience of developing relationships with other students in the class and also us so that we're able to have those connections live on Zoom. Um, if they miss a class, then we can sign them up for free for you know the next mm -hmm. session and they can catch the next class the next month or whatever. Okay, yeah, it's so interesting you're saying that with the requests because the interviews that I've been doing like with you have had some really good like feedback has been tremendous. And like, I, I don't I don't really, I mean, this confirms my research, but um, when I interview um, healer, mentor, teacher, guide, coach, and then I, I, I hear, I get feedback like, oh my God, I didn't know such amazing people were out there like that. I contacted her, go, go, bought whatever, course book, right? Then, then I interview somebody else who's also a healer and said, we have to shut down like this, this one guy I interviewed in, in um, Bulgaria and Sophia, he, they had to shut down their healing center because they couldn't find um, clients. So I have, on the one side, I have clients who are desperately looking for people. On the other hand, I have clients who can't find people who are already there. And like, oh, wow. this is basically the result of my research as well, which is, you know, why, why even when I started off with Find Your Mentor on my project, my platform, I'm like, we need a solution for this because we are heading into times where there will not be enough people like you. We're going to need a lot more people like you. So there's not going to be, there's not going to be, um, uh, we'll need, um, there will be way more people who are looking for help and support and we're not there yet. Yeah. That's interesting because when I entered what I'm doing, it's, it, and it's still, it's very oversaturated market and some people are incredibly good at what they do. Some people are not so good at what they do. I mean, it's just like anything, you know, yeah. hairstylists, some people, top oh, tier, yeah. some people, you know, you know, they're doing it out of their garage for a buck 50. So it's like, you gotta yeah. be very careful who you, who you go to, what's their level of training and use your own intuition too. So, you know, if somebody doesn't align with me, that's fine. I don't want someone coming to me if they don't feel aligned with me just because somebody gave a recommendation. Um, but if, by all means, if you feel aligned, then, you know, you're welcome and I'm, I'm happy to have you. Um, but I understand what you're saying because with Saturn and Pisces coming up here, you know, that's going to really create a reality check, especially around spirituality. And I do feel like a lot of masks are going to come off mm -hmm. um, because unfortunately, and I'm not here to judge people, but there's a lot of spiritual Thanks. teachers out there who they, they know their stuff. They know their astrology. They know their tarot. They, they know, they know, um, numerology, all this stuff, but in here, it's a different person. It's a completely different person. And is it my job to expose them? Absolutely not. Um, but I think the public will eventually find out, you know, who's authentic and who's not who's someone they should be because, well, who's someone they should be getting readings from. Cause I'll tell you this, be very, very, very discerning who reads you very discerning. 
And if I can leave the audience with anything, it's this, um, you know, there's some readers who will project on you. And I think we're even talking about this, like readers, you know, you have friends, I'm sure who like say, Hey, um, Sophia, you know, like, why aren't you, I don't, you look fit. I'm just saying something like going to the gym more. It's like, it's because they feel bad about not going to the gym more. So they'll say it to you, right? So it's like, we have some readers out there who project, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you have to be very careful because there's some, they're, they're literally creating a psychic connection with you. They're, they're looking into your soul essentially. So um, to create that connection with somebody, it's very sacred and it's, it's an energy exchange, even if it's not a physical energy exchange, like sex, it's still an energy exchange. So people have to be very discerning who they want to partner up with. It's a very with intimate that. process. Yeah. And sacred. It's true. Like, yeah. like if somebody is ill will willing, you can, you, there's, you know, that's, you, yeah, it's important to, to, to really, and if you're not sure, like sleep over it again or look deeper or have another conversation or just like feel really good about what you're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, it's like people can ask for like um, a free call or whatever. I don't have that option on my website, but if someone just really wanted to talk to me or whatever, that's fine. That's why I put out so much content too, you know, of my daily lives. So people can get to know me and if they don't feel right, then it's fine you know, mm-hmm. or if they feel right, it's, it's fine. But yeah. yeah. I, I, and I, but I also think like some, sometimes people think, oh, that person has a huge following. That must be a good person. It doesn't mean that's the right person for you. No, yeah. no, no. Just like, you know, we all go to, again, different hairstylists or different doctors. You know, your friend could say, oh, this doctor is great you know, like they help me so much and you go in, like, you don't have a very good rapport yeah. with them and they're not listening to you. They just have their way of doing things or you go to a hairstylist. They did a great job on your friend's hair, but you have a different texture. You have a different color and they're not going to do the same for you. So like you said, it's very important to use your discernment, your spiritual GPS to figure out who's right for you. Yes. Find the right person. That's so that's it. That's one really important thing. And I, I feel like a lot of people just go, go someplace because, um, um, you know, if you're not, if you're not really feeling the connection, but you're kind of not forcing yourself, but maybe, um, you think you should, or, you know, just because your friend said that person's good. So when I recommend somebody to, I'm like, but really listen to yourself, because just because I, I think that person is a good recommendation doesn't mean that person is. So you know, here's what I can show this person, get a feel for yourself. But it's interesting. I feel more and more people really are having more of a, of a sense. Um, um, you know, the, all our senses are being activated and it's just about trusting and like, we all have that. It's all built into us. Same way we have feelings, like who's going to explain a feeling, but we have it. Exactly. You can't see it. Sometimes you see Mm -hmm. the facial expression and the body language, Mm -hmm. But we all have them exactly. And we have to really start trusting ourselves more. Yes, That's part of the great awakening is the individual trust. Like this doesn't sit well with me. Well, everybody else, the masses say it's fine. I guess I should just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a horrible problem years later. I think we all know what I'm talking about at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I get some kind of myocarditis or whatever, <laughs> so whatever it's called. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just really make sure if something doesn't sit well with you, whatever it is. I think this that's the best piece of advice I could ever give. If something doesn't sit well with you, this is not just about readers, but it's about anything in life. If something doesn't sit well with you. There's a reason why. There's a reason yeah. why. Listen yeah. to that. Listen yeah, and trust and honor that. Yes, definitely yeah. honor it. Yeah. Yes. No response. <laughs> oh, and Sarah, thank you, thank you so much for being so open and um, giving so much insight. So important. The more we, this is education. Yeah. The more we learn, the better we become at discerning or understanding or this whole new area. Um, I'm I'm absolutely fascinated by. I've, I've tapped into tarot. Um, 
um, this year I started. It just it just happened. It was like I I want to understand it. I'm not a tarot card reader. I have tarot cards and I do what you just you know what you recommended, which is I I I play around with them and I'm understanding more and more about their power. Um, and but I have a lot of respect for cards. Um, because yes. yeah. There's like, there's a lot of room for misinterpretation too, or yeah. projecting into the cards what you want. Um, I've had, you know, I've pulled cards. And I'm like, no, let me be shuffle. I do not like these cards. You can't do that. No, what it says no. is what it says. That's it. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think, I I don't know. I was misguided. I need to be shuffle. <laughs> I'm like, I'm kidding myself. It's ridiculous. I'm going to move on to, I don't know, vacuuming or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Distract yourself. Well, it's the best thing to do is move on. I mean, got to have that message resonate and figure out why that happened, right? For sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on, Sophia. I appreciate you. And uh, I'm so glad we were able to connect again. Me too. I'd love to, like, maybe I have the honor of um, talking to one of your colleagues too. We'll see. Um, we'll just, um, you know, it'll happen if it's supposed to happen and I was thinking actually of doing something for Christmas in and around Christmas um where I'd love to invite you and I um it's it's not fully incorporated yet so I have a really good idea but I'm I'm still formulating it to get together and um create almost like a safe haven in and around Christmas where many people are coping with um maybe some difficulties with family or whatever maybe loneliness um like just need some inspiration and some some guidance and some people who are high vibrational very balanced and um not that you know we're all 100 percent balanced but just a certain level of um um positivity and and you know radiating uh the right that just you know good good feelings and get together and just give that to people as a gift and come together and have a big um like um yeah I'm not sure what to call it yet but I'll, I'll definitely and when I'm finished with my thoughts then I'd love to share sure. with me, invite you and then maybe we can all get together like in a big circle cool yeah just keep me informed I'll see if I'm available around then yeah that'd be cool okay. Okay. yeah okay well, all thank right you. you're welcome Sophia all right well, we see each other. We're going to see each other later on Instagram somehow anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Thanks again for having me on. Thank you. Okay. Have a beautiful Bye. day. Thank you, honey. Bye. Bye.